Hi, Jesse Nebulous here, and please disregard any cat noises you may hear. He is grooming himself very loudly. Anyway, in this video we're going to be going from start to finish on a piece, starting from the very basic sketching all the way to fully rendered. And I thought that would be interesting just to kind of document the process, because at this point I don't really have an idea. I am sketching to brainstorm. There's different types of sketching. One is where you're sketching out a specific idea, and another where you're just brainstorming. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm starting with some trees. They're not the best trees in the world, but they're trees and I enjoy trees. I draw them all the time, which is why it's one of my go-tos. So I'm just trying to come up with an idea, just limbering. First, I'm going to get limber and loose and warm up. And then I'm going to start looking up some references of trees and just see if I can get a spark. And I happened upon this one, this skull tree, which got me thinking about bones and such. So I decided to look up some bones and I combined that with what I was already doing. And I tried to do a little bone tree to see how I felt about that. Well, it was okay, but it it didn't really spark anything, so I kept going. And, you know, I started drawing gems, because I like gems, that's another go-to of mine. And I can fully render those if you want to learn how to draw those. I've got a video. Oh, it looks like my gel pen has run out of ink. How sad. Please, a moment of silence for a fallen gel pen. Rip. Anyway, so if you want to learn how to make those, I have a video. I'll put the card up and I'll try to remember to put it in the description as well. You can learn how to draw those. They're quite simple. Eyes are another go-to of mine, so I decided to do that. And maybe I just have a dirty mind, but what does that look like to you? Uh-huh. Anyway, and you might wonder why I have a picture of Dylan Morton. It's because I plan to draw him someday. And that's an Irish comedian. If you don't know who he is, he's hilarious. But just going along, drawing a little flower, and then I'm th thinking again, just looking through my references, and this is kind of sparking something for me. So I decided to draw a skull. And that went pretty well. So I drew another one. And it also went well, and I decided to draw one at an angle. And that went well, and I was feeling good about it, so I go to a fresh page. And I start drawing out full-size skull. And the thing about sketching, and I'm using a reference, of course. You should always use a reference, even if you're going to do something that's mostly imagination. Use a reference for everything that's not. Um, think about sketching out your uh, final image or what will be your final image is that when it goes right it's so much dopamine and it feels so good sometimes you just can't find the lines and this is one of those days for me I couldn't find the lines it was the angle of the, of the skull I believe it was just one I hadn't done before so it was something completely new and for some reason I felt it was very important for you all to know what song I was listening to so I wrote it out. Legal Assassin for the Repo Genetic Opera soundtrack. Yeah, good stuff. So, couldn't find the lines, had a heck of a time. So I'm finally starting to get somewhere with it. And as I said, references are your friend. They will help you immensely to find those lines. And I'm feeling pretty good about it at this point. I'm starting to get into a good flow. I'm finding all the right lines. Well, <laughs> all the decent lines, I guess I should say, if I'm going to be accurate. But I'm figuring out where... I put a little hole there, didn't like it, decided, hmm, let me sketch out this idea real quick. And so I start looking up a reference for my idea. And I start drawing some roots. Roots coming out of the eye socket and the mouth. And 
from the top of the head the flower that I had sketched earlier. So you see how it all comes together. Now I fiddle around with different parts of the flower and then I make a mistake here which leads me to my tip of the video. Between sketching and rendering, take a break. I did not do that. I just kept going. You should always take a break. And the reason you should do that is because it lets your brain and your eyes reset. Because when you're staring at your drawing for however long it takes, you know, maybe an hour, you stop seeing the flaws in it. You start being unable to discern where the wrong lines are. <laughs> Because they start to feel, they start feeling right when they shouldn't, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And I don't notice until much later that that flower is pretty jacked up. But the skull seems to be going well, so as you can see, I'm putting in the shading. And I'm starting with my darkest values. Um, some people are bothered by this. I personally enjoy, well, I shouldn't even say enjoy. It is simply easiest for me to start with my darkest values because it helps me keep the rest of my values in check. If I know how dark I need to go, then I know how light I can stay. That kind of thing. And maybe for you, you want to work light to dark. That's perfectly fine. In colored pencil, you don't have to. I, it might be different for different mediums. I'm not great at a whole lot of mediums here. I'm mostly good at colored pencil. <laughs> And drawing with pen with pencil that works to regular pencil but you don't have to do light to dark in that sense you don't have to start doing all your lightest values and build up to your dark values what you need to do is when you are going to have a dark value in that sense in that instance you need to build it up from the light to dark meaning start with the light color and you see how I'm slowly building up to the dark I'm not just going in with straight black. I am doing a light green. I'm doing a medium green. Then I'm doing a dark green. That's how you get depth. If you just go straight in with like a black or even a dark green, it's gonna look very flat and you don't want that. And now that I've got my dark values and I can start going in with my lightest because that's just the way it works for me. And as you can see, I'm doing quite well. I'm pleased with how the skull turns out. It's the other areas that I have issues with, that I take exception with. So, and I'm starting to put in the shadows around the roots and around the flower. And I had a little bit of trouble with the flower, I will admit. Um, even just the shadows, and I think the reason is because subconsciously I understood that the flower was, the petals were too short on some of the, some of those petals are way too short. And I think subconsciously I was aware of it, which is why I had such a hard time figuring out where to put the shadows. Because usually that kind of shadows, they're fairly straightforward, and I shouldn't have had as much trouble with it as I did. Um, there's other elements of this drawing where the shadows are much harder that I have less trouble with. And I think it's because subconsciously I knew that flower is jacked up. So. But at this point, I have not noticed yet. At least not consciously. In my conscious mind, nothing is wrong yet. I am aware of no wrongness at this point in time. So. I'm starting to do the shading around the back of the skull. And for this piece, I am going to blend out with white. I'm not using odorless mineral spirits. This is just a sketch page in my sketchbook. I generally don't use odorless mineral spirits on it because it's fairly thin paper and you can run into problems trying to use any sort of liquid on a thin paper and I just don't even try. There's no point. So I'm going to blend out with a white as you will see. You can use a white pencil to blend out quite well. It will lighten the color a little bit. It's just something to be aware of. As you can see, I'm going in with um, trying to get the shadows in around those petals. Finally, it took this whole drawing to do it. I started it and then stopped it and started. It's because I think I knew on some level that they were wrong. 
So, deepening up the shadows around the eyes. Or in the eyes, I should say, not around them. Just working my way around the piece. I generally... I don't really go in... Outside of working my darks first. I don't go in any specific order. I don't finish one little small piece and then move on. I kind of jump around a little bit. I just... That's the way I work. That's my workflow. I'm adding shadows to the back of the head. Continuing to render in this very pretty bluish green color. It's very nice. It's one of my favorites in this new set that I got. Which surprised me because I thought I'd like the pink most because I am a pink girl. I love pink. But I didn't really get any exciting pinks in this one. They're okay pinks, but this aquamarine kind of color, gorgeous. It is good stuff. And this piece took me maybe two and a half hours, something like that, three hours. Which I'm not saying as a flex or to complain. I'm just saying it because colored pencil is a very slow medium. So if you're going to do colored pencil, you just need to be aware of that. If that's something, if you're here because you're thinking about doing colored pencils or, you know, start thinking about getting into colored pencils, it's a slow medium. Just letting you know, you're not going to finish a piece like this in 15 minutes. It's going to take a couple hours. And this isn't even like a really detailed one. Okay. As you can see, I am starting to work on the roots going in with a light base because light to dark in the sense that when you want a dark you build up to that dark not in the sense that you have to work on your lightest values first and build up to your darks that's something that's a mistake people make and they get after me sometimes and it really well I, it doesn't make me mad or anything but it does get annoying it does get annoying so and I'm noticing that I need to add more shadow to the root that's inside the eye to push it back. Dark colors and cool colors will push an item or a subject into the background. And warmer colors will bring it into the foreground. So that's something that I'm keeping in mind as I'm doing these roots. Just little tips. I don't have a whole lot, but I've got a few. And it's at this point when I'm starting to work on the flowers that I'm realizing that, <laughs> and if you could see, I was actually measuring with my pencil and I realized that the petals are way too short. So what I try to do, and I don't know how successful it is, is I try to kind of make it look like the flower is, the petal is bending down and curling under, which would be why it's shorter. I don't know how successful I am at this, but that is what I attempted. At least with that one. The other ones aren't shaped in a way that I could do that. And this is why you always take a break between the sketch and the render. Take a break. Go for a walk. Just take five minutes. Go for a walk and do something. Um, you know, go to the bathroom. Just get up and go and just let your mind reset. Or another thing that's useful is maybe turn the canvas upside down or use your phone to take a picture and look at it through on the camera lens. For some reason, for some reason, that helps too. I don't know what it is. It just, it resets your brain. So definitely, if you take nothing away from this video except that, I will be happy. <laughs> because I need to learn that. And I know it, and I still didn't do it. Because I get impatient, because I get so excited. I want to get to the coloring, because I love color. That's my favorite part of a piece is actually putting in the color. My least favorite part is usually the sketching and getting all the proportions correct, obviously, which is the problem here. So I get impatient to get to the coloring and my work suffers for it. So it's something I need to learn and if you can learn with me, that's awesome. Learn from my mistakes. Because as you can see, I have a pretty good skull going and the root's okay, but that flower is messed up but at least the colors are nice 
this way. The flower has that going for it. And looking back at the flower now, it's been, you know, I finished this yesterday. I was disgusted with it and I was, I was so done. <laughs> I didn't spend as much time on the flower as I intended because I was so done with it. But it's actually not as bad as I originally thought. Which is another thing. Try not to critique your work too, too severely. You're only human. Okay, we're coming up close to the end of this video and the end of this piece. Just gonna fill out the middle. I didn't even put much detail into it because I was so sick of it and just wanted to be done with it. But <laughs> we're coming to the end of the video. And this is the final piece. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jessie Nebulous. If you had any value in this, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.